Okay, let's start off. A blank enemy studio file. And we're just going to draw a simple ball. If you've been following, you should know how to do that by now. Color in. White will do. You can uh, thicken the outline if you want. Okay, so we've got the basic ball. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to be using the timeline, which is uh, what controls all the animation. You'll see at the start of it are some little dots. These indicate that there's um, keyframes there. Basically, what you do is you drag the timeline to where you want to insert a keyframe, and then you drag all the points where you want it to go, and it will automatically insert a keyframe for you, and it will go between them like that. So you don't need to bother putting all the in-betweens in, because it does it for you. Okay, let's delete that. See, it will go back there. Okay, for our ball to fall down to the ground, it will probably take about half a second. So drag over to 12 frames, and let's drag it down. So there it is now, full. And then it will go back up, and it will probably take another half a second. So let's go back up. And there you have a bouncing ball. But it's not very realistic and not very interesting. So what we want to do is add some squish and squash. Now, let's first of all delete this bit. We're going to make it slow down a bit to add this squish and squash. So let's go to frame 18. And now, instead of making it go back up, let's move some of these points around. Downwards a bit. So it's squashed. You need bounce squash. You might notice that it does some things that you don't want it to do. You can adjust them by changing this from smooth to linear. And then it will just go without making any mistakes. So you go, it bounces, but it doesn't go back up. Unless, of course, you play it backwards, which is what I'm doing. If you want to just test it, you can just go over it by dragging the timeline. Or you can click the play button. Okay, now to make it bounce back up. Now it will probably deform before it leaves uh, the ground as well. So let's make it deform like that. So go like that. It's a bit odd, so we'll change it back a bit. Okay, and then it will bounce back up. Move that, make it back in the shape of the circle. Now, here's a mistake that's been made because we haven't inserted a keyframe for that particular dot. If you select it and look at the timeline, you'll notice there's only one dot at that place. That means that dot hasn't got any information on where to be. So, we need to make sure we just move it back. Let's move that down again. So it knows where to be on that keyframe. There you go, and now it bounces. The only problem with this is it takes a bit of a while to get back to normal, and a ball wouldn't actually do that. So what we want to do is, let's say a couple of frames after it's deformed, we just turn it back to normal. That gives it almost jelly effect. And you can adjust this up and down, just move it about to see if it what the right effect is. Or maybe you don't think it's high enough. Now the one last bit is that if you want to loop it, this frame here might not match up with this frame here. Now you can solve that two ways. First of all, you can click in between the timeline and all the numbers, and it will make a little onion skin, which is a small outline of what it looks like on that frame. Then you can adjust the points until they match. So now they're the same. Another way is to select these points, click copy and paste, and then it's exactly the same. Now if you just want to uh, make it go again, there's several ways you can do that. You could copy all these frames, make sure you get spacing right, and just hit paste, and it will bounce again. 
or you can use a loop. When you right click on a point, you can change it from linear, ease in, ease out, ease in, ease out, step, noisy, or cycle. If we select cycle and we want it to go back to frame one, now you see this red line which shows that it's going back to frame one after this frame. So it bounces, 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 and it will continue to bounce until you add a new frame in. Now, if you have Anime Studio Pro, you can press File and Export. You come up with this menu. Make sure you change it to either AVI, AVI or QuickTime, otherwise you'll have a lot of images saved to wherever you've saved it. Click AVI, Entire Animation. You can check whatever you want, and then click OK. Then choose a safe place to save it, and call it Ball, and click Save. Now you might want to cha uh, change the compressor so it takes up less space, or you could just leave it as full frames. I'm going to choose Microsoft Video 1. Click OK. Now you can put it into any video editing software you want.